Hello everyone, Jensen Vars here. Glad to have you here and Happy New Year. In this video, I'm going to talk about the new extra optional add-on for Pum Companion that brings connectivity to AI or better said LLMs, large language models and image models to the app so they can support you in your journey of storytelling. Um, I hope to be able to demonstrate some of its features in this video and also demystify misunderstandings and bring to earth what it is for and what it can be used for. So let's take a look together because I think it's gonna be cool. As every video begins with me becoming and making myself smaller to the bottom right and hopefully you can still see me while I can show you what's in the app. The app itself continues to get lots of improvements, features and bug fixes as always and of course the there will be their new features once you activate the extra to start with i'm gonna demonstrate some of the features or what you can do with this ai connectivity and then i'm gonna explain a little bit how you configure it and how does it work or what does it do in the background so the first feature i would like to show you is the ai companion it is essentially a chat within Pum Companion, where you can talk about anything related to your game, from world building, from brainstorming or RPG mechanics, like, hey, how do I calculate, uh, I don't know, the defense of this character. Pum Companion will know what system you're playing, what has been going on in your game recently, um, and also follow up with any topic you would like to discuss. To give an example, I don't know, I just recently re rolled the Discovery Oracle over there, uh, what do you think uh, the discovery could mean? And uh, this is a good example to show you that the AI companion feature is aware of the story. Let's see what it comes up with. The discovery of jewelry gem and transformation suggests a significant plot development tied to the undead threat. The jewelry could be a curse artifact or a relic that holds power over the undead, potentially serving as a key to controlling or banish them. I don't know, as you can see, even if, if even though you, uh, as I will show you in a moment, you can directly interpret that oracle over there. With the chat, you can discuss such a thing. Or you can say, hey, um, come up with, I don't know, five names for a tavern, write in Pum Companion without having to go elsewhere, uh, is another example. The next set of tools um, is the writing assistant set of tools. Essentially, you will see this icon over here that is gonna offer you five functions, proofread, which is going to fix your sp uh, spells or grammar without changing anything. Enhance, which is going to elevate or improve that message you're writing. Condense, which is capable of compacting or summarizing things. Elaborate, which generates new text. And Instruct, which takes a request from you and applies that operation on your text. These are text operations, that means they execute um, writing or generate or text changes in your existing writing. To give you an example, um, you can simply insert a new line in one of your character journals and press elaborate and it's going to read what's already written there, for example, uh, combined with what's going on in your story and it's going to expand that um, with a paragraph or two on top of that, adding to certain things, which can be useful, for example, for new locations and PCs or maybe characters you don't know much about and you say, okay, let's let's implement something about it. In other examples, you can go to allocations, for example, and maybe say, okay, you maybe you copy pasted this text from elsewhere, from the book, from the game, and you say, hey, make a compact version of this um, and condense that text, which is going to really shrink it to a small paragraph to give you an example. The other powerful tool is the instruct operation, which can be really cool because you can choose, for example, an NPC character, uh, let's say, I don't know, Izara in my game and say, um, and give an instruction, like, what does she say? Um, and this, in the AI connectivity is going to brainstorm and come up with um, a text that of what he could, she could say. This is super cool. I'm going to let you play around this, but essentially it can be used for generating dialogue, for generating descriptions, uh, something you want to say next, but you cannot come up with the idea or you don't want to, um, it's going to help you with that. Something else the AI can do is um, interpret or help you interpret narrative points. For example, in this case, I ended my storytelling with a discovery oracle call that says find hidden clue or lead 
with focus on transformation and maybe you're playing and say hey mm, I don't know what what is this about um, or what could that mean so I can press build narrative and it's going to hit the large language model and come up with something that fits in your story in this case it says hey a six squad clears the last remnant of the undead at the outpost Fader discovers a tattered journal among the remaining of fallen cultists. So as you see it takes the discovery oracle result and makes something out for the story that fits what has been happening so far. Alternatively the other feature is called direct answers. You can ask a question um, that, that instead of you choosing an oracle to answer you can get an answer directly from the AI. So in this case for example I say uh, I don't know let me take that last message. How does the journal look like um, and instead of you choosing an oracle you press this button over here which is going to let the AI figure something out it is going to also use oracles by itself so um, the AI should be powered by Pum, which I'm gonna explain in a minute how it works uh, to, to build those answers so it comes up with something that says hey the journal discovered by Fader is tattered and worn its pages yellowed and frayed at the edges from exposure to the elements so how much you use this how little it's up to you but uh, for certain things that maybe you get stuck with or you don't know how to describe this can be an extra um, storytelling assistant right at the fingertips cool something else that could happen is that you want to generate maybe an entry, a character, a location, or a, or a character, or a compendium, um, and you want to build something quickly, you can also draft these entities with the draft with AI button that uh, it cannot take if you like um, a prompt. So you can give it some sort of input or not. Uh, you can also leave it empty and see what it comes up with just with what's been happening in the story so far. Cool, so as you can see it came up with something called the Fortress of Vengeance uh, with a description for it and an image generated for that so you have a compendium entrance entry in your, in your game. Um, the cool thing about it is that if you like, I don't know, I'm gonna make a silly example but just to give you an example, you can, um, I don't know, create a new journal here called Aspects and assume you're playing Fate for a moment, you can always give it an instruction to say um, describe the fate aspects of this fortress um, and then for example you can quickly um, let the AI generate aspects that you could use as part of your game. Um, depending on how clever is the model you're using the better you will know the system and so on uh, it's gonna come up with something relevant for your game. Likewise, you can also use it to create plot and folding machine plot nodes. So if you come here to the right panel and press, I don't know, in useful findings, this button over here, you can also generate a plot nodes. In this case, it's going to generate a useful findings for which you can give a prompt saying, hey, I want to have this plot node in my game, please come up with something. Or you can leave it blank to just come up with something at random. All right, as you can see, it generated the frost amulet uh, with an image as well so let's send it to the log just to see it a call distant amulet that grants temporary clarity in battle allowing the wearer to foresee the immediate actions of enemies as you can see it is trying it's pulling everything from the game you're playing it's not going to come up with something um, it's too unusual that doesn't fit your type of storytelling and so on which makes this AI assistant really cool for any game you're playing it's going to adapt itself to its own and you can do a bunch of things for example you can even add extra additional images with a prompt uh, I don't know for example interior of the fortress and if you have an image model configured depending on how good it is as well uh, you can add different images and really visualize your game adding these elements to it so you can see uh, it added an image for that interior of the fortress, which is cool. I like it. So um, what's up with all of this? Because I know I rolled the features a bit too fast. They might look simple. They are deceptively simple, but a lot is going on behind screens. The way it works is that um, once you get this extra, 
you will have an AI assistant configuration tab where you can link, you will link your Pum Companion app to your favorite provider. That means you will be responsible for providing the account. You are going to pay for the spending because usually these models are not free. Although some of them can be really cheap. For example, for this video, I've been using GPT-40 Mini, which is like virtually free if you use it reasonably little and image models which usually are a bit more expensive so you can uh, decide how much you're willing to spend per usage versus the quality of your content but the role of Pum Companion is to orchestrate the model you connect it's going to leverage its intelligence but it's Pum Companion the one that provides those intelligent models with enough context and information about your game and it's the one that is orchestrating different parts of them to give you the answers that you want. This way you can just talk naturally to Pum Companion AI integration and it will know about the game you're playing. That means it is going to share with these intelligent models like ChatGPT5 or Gemini Pro or whichever you integrate and um, Pum Companion is going to leverage that intelligence to build up very interesting and relevant content for your game while also protecting your wallet a little bit. So it is a bit of a magic sauce that I have put in the app with a lot of uh, passion for it, for getting to see the technology aspect of this uh, in action. And the good thing is that you are the owner of that integration. If you enable the advanced AI mode, you will have more providers. So of those of you who are more into it, you can integrate more providers like Open Router, Hugging Face, uh, and even custom or offline models if you have the power to run them. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of that, but um, you can uh, join us on Discord to ask questions and I'm going to build up a documentation um, and with the help of the beta testers. The other thing that it's really important is the AI settings. The AI setting is the critical essence of your game. It is a game specific setup for how the LLM, uh, the AI essentially integration works with this specific game. When you open it, you have three definitions to provide. One is your game rules and settings. So telling the AI what you are playing. So it knows maybe D&D, Band of Blades, whatever. Writing style preferences. Hey, I like violence. I like, uh, I don't know, soft writing. I want it cozy. Um, I don't know. I don't want this or that. Or please do not talk on behalf of Jane's. That's my protagonist or whatever. Then you have image style preferences, which is like for the image generator, what kind of things are in common that lets you define certain baselines. So all of the images that you generate across your entire game look similar or follow the same rules. For example, black and white, hand-drawn, uh, Picasso style or whatever you come up with. Um, last but not least, there is the plot scope configuration, which is part of your notes. And it's a, it's a place inside your game where you are supposed to tell what is your game about? What is your mission? What are your characters doing? Who are they? What do they want? What is the plot seed? And this is the place that the AI will also leverage to figure out what is important to you. So if you combine these preferences with your, uh, with your plot scope or a summary of the game, the better the model will be behave. So with that said, this is how Pum Companion is very aware of what you're playing at all times, making it really strong and fun to play with. Now, if you go to the main menu, uh, you will see also a button called Draft with AI, allowing you to create an entire game draft using AI. I'm not going to do that now because it takes a few minutes depending on your setting, but I'm going to show you this one, which was a cyberpunk game that I generated uh, recently. So you can see in my screen how it generated plot nodes, each with their own images, um, a set of pending questions for me to answer and even a set of characters that I even can now use the gallery view to to figure out um, their artistic style. 
And of course, the whole idea of using AI integration with Kun Companion is not to play on your behalf, it's not to read your mind, it's not to replace you or whatever you're thinking. It's rather a tool, a tool to improve maybe your writing style if you're into that, a tool to be more on the player seat and let the LLM take some of the decisions, a tool maybe to use to help you visualize locations that you would otherwise not come up with or things that are not so relevant for you. Of course, you decide how you play it, but as you can see, all of the AI interactions in the app are very human triggered. That means they are not going to be automatic. They are not going to do a bunch of fluff on your behalf. They are very well specified. You have the condense function, you have the proofread function, you have the interpret oracle function. All of that is to pull up as you need. Of course, it's going to build on your account, although it's going to be relatively um, efficient. Uh, it's not going to be something crazy expensive unless you use very, very expensive reasoning models and so on. Um, it's going to rather be something there for you to use on your game for real, for actual improvements of your storytelling. I have not deep dive in all of the things you can do, but I'm going to leave you that to for you to explore. So with that said, I hope you like this idea of the extra of the AI assistant. If you don't like AI, I uh, don't take it personally. It's an optional. It's not a feature. It's not going to infect the app at all. So if you don't enable it, you will not notice a thing. And for those of you who are fine with that as a tool, as a technology and with reasonable usage and expectations as well, uh, we're going to be able to improve our player seat experience quite significantly with this extra. With that said, happy to have you here. A very big thanks to all of the beta testers, Dr. Casey, Seal, Squishy, um, Dex, and all of the colleagues and community members in the Discord for very great and amazing feedback all the time and for the big support they give us. So we wouldn't have such a great feature if it weren't for their inputs. So until that, then see you on the community and stay in touch. This is Jensen Bars and bye bye.